you, John. The most prevalent current progressive critiques of economics as a discipline seem to generally center on GDP. What is it, and does it not count, and does it need to grow, hold constant, or shrink? Now, this valid but rather narrow critique has gained virtually no political traction and is almost universally dismissed or ignored by mainstream economists. Now, we're suggesting that the limitations of economics as a discipline go much deeper to its flawed intellectual foundations and the extremely narrow lens through which it views what is arguably the most complex of all systems known to our species. <clears throat> now, as we all know, the word economics is derived from the Greek economia, which means management of the household. Now, the problem with economics starts here with the fact that economists largely focus on the firm and ignore the household, which is a beginning fundamental conceptual flaw in its own right, but that's another story. Now, the human household writ large is Earth's biosphere, which is an extremely complex living system. Indeed, we're only beginning to recognize and understand the true wonder and complexity of the biosphere's capacity for resilient, adaptive, creative self-organization. Now, this complexity grows by at least another order of magnitude when we add humans into the mix. We humans, of course, are the most complex and self-directing of species with richly varied individual motivations and preferences. And we create diverse cultures and institutions that in turn shape our individual collective behaviors in many different ways and often conflicting ways. Now, most species members of the Earth community household join together in extraordinary, creative, and ultimately cooperative dance through which they self-organize to make a living for all through productive work and exchange. Life is the defining value, maintaining the conditions essential to the life, vitality, and continued evolution of the whole of the community is the defining purpose. Each species participant in the Earth community household, down to the lowliest bacterium, through its individual choices, manages its relationships with the other members and thereby contributes to the overall management of the household as a living system. Nearly all of our species relate to the overall household as symbionts, contributing cooperatives when viewed in the larger picture. There are, of course, a few exceptions. Species that relate as pathogens, disease-causing organisms harmful to the host on which they depend. Now, the most notable and dangerous of these pathogens from the Earth community household perspective is the human species. <laughs> For most pathogens, the pathology is genetically determined. For us, it is a choice supported by an economics based on a mathematical model adapted from physics through the application of spurious assumptions. This economics does not cause our pathogenic dysfunction, but it badly obscures our ability to recognize the dysfunction and to see and act on alternatives. Now, viewed from this larger perspective, we can see that economics is a discipline is hopelessly narrow in its perspective, has little relationship to the real world, and is far from being a true science. Ignoring all the complexity of the living Earth community household, the economic models favored by economists primarily model a system of financial exchange. The real world financial system is essentially a system of accounts by which modern societies manage certain exchanges between persons and economic entities to allocate economic and political power and resources. It is a highly complex system in its own right, although far less complex than the biosphere for which economists find no place in their models. Economists also choose to ignore the more complex and less easily modeled aspects even of the financial system. In particular, the dom domination, monopolization, and manipulation of the financial system by global banks and financiers for purely private benefit using rules of their own choosing. It is further troubling that economics, which should be the broadest and most inclusive of academic disciplines, and should have the strongest roots in real world observation, is among the most narrow and insular. It is also one of the least concerned about drawing insights from other disciplines and in testing its own theories in the real world. Most economists demonstrate a surprisingly narrow and limited understanding of money, markets, institutions, power, human behavior, biology, ecology, and history. 
and seem unconcerned by their evident inability to anticipate or to address in any relevant way the devastating dysfunctions of our management of our portion of the Earth community household. And this, of course, is all consistent with the evidence that Neva points out that the ranks of professional economists are largely populated by individuals who, as students in introductory economics courses, were not morally or intellectually offended by the mantra that only selfishness is rational, and who were comfortable with theoretical principles that lack a basis in reality. Each of these data points suggests that we will need to look beyond the ranks of professionally trained economists for the open, creative, and perceptive systems thinkers with a high tolerance for ambiguity and uncertainty required to develop the new economics for the new Earth community economy that human society so desperately needs. 